Item number SCP-2401 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2401 and SCP-2401-Alpha are to be stored together in Cell-22 at Research Site-45. Cell-22 must be stocked with 3 meters squared of potted wildflowers with an automated drip irrigation system to maintain them. A small electric incinerator, designed for burning pine needles, is to be installed near Cell-22 so that it can be supplied and operated by attending staff. The exhaust of the incinerator is to be piped directly into Cell-22 whenever SCP-2401 becomes excited or agitated. Plans for combining adjacent Cell-23 with Cell-22 are currently awaiting approval. SCP-2401 Beta is to be held as a reserve designation until further notice. Description: SCP-2401 are a previously unknown species of honeybee that exhibit parasitic or symbiotic traits depending on the sex of the human host. To date, a sustainable colony of SCP-2401 has only been observed of one human female host. In all observed cases, male hosts expire typically within 9 to 12 days post-colonization from inflammatory complications caused by routine stinging and gross modifications of dermal tissue. This also compromises the immune system leaving male hosts vulnerable to anaerobic infection. After death of the male host, SCP-2401 will leave the body in search of another human host. Colonization does differ slightly in female hosts, whereas there is much lesser risk of infection due to higher levels of propolis production. Once 30-50% of the dermis is modified into a keratin-based honeycomb, the colonization reaches a stable state and does not expand further. After this process is completed, SCP-2401 exhibits standard protective behavior towards the host, treating them as the nest. SCP-2401 adopt host scent markers, adjusting colonial odor markers to match the host. This process sensitizes SCP-2401 to the emotional and physical condition of the host. The female host also undergoes rapid changes to both accommodate and protect SCP-2401, which include increased tissue regeneration, higher amphetamine output, and lack of dependency for food or water. In the majority of cases, the female host retains her personality and memories, which usually results in psychological trauma related with the ongoing symbiosis of SCP-2401. This is seen to result in a high rate of suicide in cases where the host outright rejects symbiosis. Only one surviving case has shown a distinct interest in maintaining the symbiotic relationship between itself and SCP-2401. For all intents and purposes, she has been designated SCP-2401 Alpha. Document DOC 2401-T1 Note the following written entries were confiscated from Dr. Kenneth Lamb's hard drive. They contain sensitive information regarding SCP-2401 Alpha and are to remain on the high security data server. Date: January 4, 2015. Time: 1632. D6780 and D9343 have both been exposed to SCP-2401. This is the second trial study as to the effects of SCP-2401 on a human host. Thus far, we have not been successful in sustaining a host for more than a period of 30 days. A viable host able to survive the colonization process will be the first step in discovering a way to reverse the process and revert the host back to normalcy. It has been difficult to requisition female D-Class because of their scarcity. It's the only option since SCP-2401 and male D-Class hosts cannot coexist without killing the host body. Due to issues in previous tests, the two female hosts will be kept on suicide watch while symptoms progress. Date: January 8, 2015 Time: 9.44 Both D-6780 and D-9343 are progressing quickly with SCP-2401 and are in relatively good health. Today, however, D-6780 had to be sedated via aerosol before the host caused further self-injury. 
SCP-9343 has been minimally responsive during this period. I've asked repeatedly for the medical records of both D-Class hosts prior to testing. The paperwork seems to be conveniently missing in administration. Date: January 15, 2015 Time, 2201 Four hours ago, D-6780's attempt at drowning in the cell's commode proved successful by clogging it with daily food rations and filling it up with water. Cell 21 is currently under quarantine until the decontamination teams can assemble in the morning. I'm hoping for a more viable autopsy than the previous ones. D-9343 seems to be much calmer during this process. So far, the host is the only one who has made it this far in SCP-2401's colonization. I have requested from maintenance and from the site director to modify Cell 22 as to help better accommodate SCP-2401 and the host. I'm also still waiting for released medical records. Date: January 26, 2015 Time: 12.55 D-9343 and SCP-2401 have successfully achieved full symbiosis. D-9343 has been designated SCP-2401-Alpha, and has been observed to be much more active. After reviewing video footage, I have noticed that SCP-2401-Alpha does not eat or drink, it seems. Administration has finally delivered records on D-9343, but they are from her previous institution of incarceration. Unfortunately, the information is severely lacking in detail, with the exception of her criminal record. I'll review this information, and perhaps use it during my upcoming interviews with her. Date. January 27, 2015 Time, 1403 I conducted my first interview with SCP-2401-Alpha. She seemed relatively eager to see another face after nearly a month of solitary confinement. I asked her about her symptoms, and she explained while in the beginning she was experiencing a great deal of pain. Most of that has been curtailed, and she feels much better. A quick physical examination conducted through the observation window concluded that she is estimated to have 50% of her body surface converted into honeycomb-like structures, many of which contain SCP-2401 in various stages of maturity. I questioned about where SCP-2401 originates from, but SCP-2401-Alpha could not answer. Date: January 30, 2015 Time: 9-12 I went over SCP-2401-Alpha's criminal records with her. She had trouble recollecting much of her past for some reason, most of which had to deal with abusive relatives at a young age before being placed in foster care until she was 15. I was unable to continue with the rest of her background as I noticed she was growing more and more agitated. I used a newly installed smoker for the first time to help her calm down. She was effectively suppressed and I concluded for the day. Date: February 2, 2015 Time, 1347 Before I was able to conduct the interview, SCP-2401-Alpha was adamant about apologizing for her behavior in the previous interview. She introduced herself by her first name, Mary, and asked me mine. I introduced myself as well. Her intentions seemed harmless. Afterwards, she tried multiple times to derail the interview with small talk. I was able to keep her focused on explaining her symptoms. Mary attempted to explain a dream she had involving me, but could not recall specific details. I asked her questions regarding her mental state and wrote some additional notes to discuss with the on-site psychologist. Date: February 3, 2015 Time, 2225 Mary has stated in her interview today that she is experiencing a recurring dream. Though upon waking up, she can't recall any of it other than I am in it as well. I asked her if she would like writing supplies in order to keep a dream journal. She agreed. However, the request was denied by my superior. Mary spends her time preoccupied with her own thoughts. At times she appears rather lucid and unresponsive. I have requested for additional items to help improve stimulus. However, they are repeatedly denied. Date. February 4, 2015 Time, 1 
Mary and I have been meeting on a daily basis now. Her demeanor has been deteriorating, it seems. Off-shift guards have informed me that she has to be smoked nightly. When I confronted Mary with this information, she stated that it was because of her dreams. She still maintains that she can't recall them after awakening. My recent discussions with the on-site psychologist over my notes are still inconclusive as to Mary's mental condition. I'll continue to visit Mary daily to gain more details on improving her mental state. Aside from that, the SCP-2401 colony appears to be thriving and in optimum health. Incident Report Form Incident Date February 14, 2015 Incident Time 11.15 Site Location Research Site 45 Secured Humanoid Containment Wing Cell 22 Unique Identifier Autofill 2401-021415 Civilians involved? No. Personnel involved? Yes. Number of personnel involved? 3. Injuries or death? 1 minor injury, 2 major injuries. Amnestics used? Yes, by request. SCP involved? Yes. Designation SCP-2401 Alpha. Containment breached? Yes. Details SCP-2401 Alpha, prior to incident, exhibited agitated behaviors for a period of 10 days. SCP-2401 Alpha had difficulty expressing the source of its agitation, often deploying cryptic statements and referring to itself in the first person plural by its actual name prior to symbiosis. Dr. Kenneth Lamb, the acting supervisor of SCP-2401, postulated that SCP-2401 Alpha was delirious. 72 hours prior to incident, SCP-2401 Alpha suffered from an apparent seizure and collapsed onto the floor. Time was noted and logged. The body was kept under watch as standard in the operating procedures for human subject quarantine. After 48 hours, the site director extended quarantine to cell 22 for another 24 hours. No activity was observed from the host or the colony. The cell floor was littered with dead instances of SCP-2401 at this time. Personnel and security entered cell 22 after the quarantine period expired in order to retrieve the body for examination and autopsy. While decontaminating and preparing the body for transfer, SCP-2401-Alpha suddenly awakened and physically attacked security. Both guards suffered concussion from the altercation. Dr. Lamb was then tackled to the floor outside of containment and stripped of his clothes by SCP-2401-Alpha. On video, Dr. Lamb was held down on his back with SCP-2401-Alpha atop of him for a period of 90 seconds. From the video's limited vantage point, it was difficult to ascertain what was happening to Dr. Lamb as he showed limited signs of struggle. Afterwards, the majority of security forces subdued SCP-2401-Alpha with electroshock weaponry to force it off of Dr. Lamb and back into containment. Dr. Lamb suffered only a dislocated shoulder and minor abrasions. SCP-2401-Alpha has since replenished the SCP-2401 colony to a fully restored population and has been observed to be more docile as compared to before the incident. Addendum 2401-001 Due to SCP-2401-Alpha's recent containment breach, staff and security teams are prohibited from entering Cell 22 or conversing with SCP-2401-Alpha without direct authorization from the Site Director. Further research into SCP-2401 or SCP-2401-Alpha has been put on hold indefinitely. Post-Incident Interview INT-2401-03 Interview Date February 15, 2015 Interview Time 4.30 Site Location Research Site 45 Offices Interviewer Senior Internal Investigator Reuben Foster Interviewee Researcher Dr. Kenneth Lamb Alright, recorder is on. How are you holding up? I'm still in shock about the whole thing, I guess. Well, let me just ask, why do you think you were chosen? I don't know. Well, 
you were assigned to her. It. Right. It. For three months. You interviewed with it every other day, it looks like. I monitored the other humanoids in that wing, too. So back to my original question. Perhaps. Maybe the human inside of her. I mean, it. It made a connection. Either way, it, it got what it wanted from me. God. You feel like you can continue? I suppose. I'm sorry, I just rattled over the whole thing. Well, medically you checked out fine. Just bumps and scratches. So there's that. Look, I don't want to push you after something traumatic like that. Anything you want to say on the record? I want the injection. Give me the injection and give me the transfer. Please. I got you. I'll see what I can do. Addendum 2401-002 Doctor is to be transferred out of Research Site 45 after he is fully debriefed on the containment breach incident involving himself and SCP-2401 Alpha. He has opted for an immediate amnestic solution and will be demoted to Level 0 permanently for security reasons. Continued observation and reporting on his behaviors within the Foundation will be monitored for a period of no less than three years. Post-Incident Interview INT-2401-06 Interview Date June 16, 2015 Interview Time 22.05 Site Location Research Site 45 Secured Humanoid Containment Wing Cell 22 Interviewer Senior Internal Investigator Reuben Foster Interviewee SCP-2401 Alpha Recorder on SCP Dash Mary. It, excuse me? We like to be called Mary. Fine. Mary? Uh, what was your relationship to Dr. Lamb? Relationship? Is that what you called it? Him and us? Never mind. Can you explain then what you did to him the last time you two were together back in February? We remember him being quiet and rather content about it. Well, he was adamant about not wanting to see you ever again. Hmm. We don't believe you. We are happy with the outcome still. SCP-2401 Alpha slowly rubs her hands over her swollen abdomen. This... part of the cycle? It is, and it is not. We need sterner hosts. The females are fragile, yet willful. Strong queens for strong colonies. Our sweet Kenny, tell him for us that his progeny grows stronger with each passing day. Tell him we all await his return. Yeah, I'll pass that along. Sustained buzzing. Agent Foster turns off the intercom to cell 22. You aren't actually considering that request, are you? No, fuck that. Do me a favor though, see that button for the incinerator? Yes, sir? Smoker, 